By the 1840s, a network of telegraph poles connected nearly every American city. And by 1861, a telegraph line reached from New York to San Francisco. But messages between America and Europe still had to be sent the old-fashioned way, on sailing ships that could take weeks to cross the Atlantic Ocean. And the idea occurred to somebody to build a telegraph line across the Atlantic Ocean. The transatlantic cable would be the greatest engineering feat of the 19th century, but the idea for it came from an unlikely source. Cyrus Field, a savvy New York businessman looking for something to do. He knew nothing. He was in the paper business. He knew nothing about telegraphy, but he suddenly had this idea that we could put a, a line across the Atlantic Ocean, which was about 100 times longer than the longest undersea cable in the world at that time. He was a very determined man. He was not easily discouraged. Field spent 12 years raising money for the project, crossing the Atlantic more than 30 times to seek investors in England and Europe. He was the right man for what would prove to be a daunting task. First, over 2,000 nautical miles of cable had to be built. The cable consisted of seven strands of copper wire insulated in plastic, and it weighed over one ton per mile. Then, the cable would have to be unspooled yard by yard across the Atlantic Ocean, from Ireland to Newfoundland in Canada. But at the time, there was no ship in the world that could carry the heavy load of insulated copper wire. So two Navy ships, one American, one British, would each carry half of the cable. The ships set off together from England on August 5, 1857. But disaster struck six days later as the American ship was hit by a wave and the cable snapped. There wasn't enough cable to continue, so the project had to wait another year. For the second attempt, new cable was manufactured, and it was decided that the two ships would meet in the middle of the ocean, splice their two halves of the cable together, and then go off in opposite directions, laying cable as they went. This time, the cable on the British ship snapped, and the mission had to be abandoned once again. On the third try, both ships reached their destinations on opposite sides of the ocean with the cable intact. On August 16, 1858, Queen Victoria sent a telegram of congratulation to President Buchanan through the line. But a few weeks later, the signal on the cable gave out. Still, Cyrus Field would not give up. It took them five tries. They first had the idea in 1853. It was 1866 before they succeeded. The Civil War came and went, and Field worked even harder, raising more money for a new, heavier, and better insulated cable. By July of 1865, there was finally one single ship that could carry it, the largest ship in the world, the Great Eastern. But again, 600 miles from Newfoundland, the cable snapped while being repaired. Sailors spent nearly two weeks fishing for the cable that had sunk, but finally, they had to give up. Still, Cyrus Field knew his new cable would hold out if they tried it one more time. A year later, the Great Eastern successfully laid it across the ocean. Field was celebrated as a hero, and the new communication age began. And it changed the world very profoundly. Suddenly, the world was a small place. Within a few years, there were cables all over the world, so we could all have the same news at the same time around the globe. That was an inconceivable idea to the 19th century until it happened, and they just regarded it as a miracle.